we're going to examine how to archive our Gmail account. There's been some recent nastiness along the sides of um, um, people losing their email and so we're going to show you how to archive it locally and we're starting with our own Gmail account. We use one for our computer helpers uh, Gmail account com and so we're going to just go into the Google help screen at the Gmail account and simply type in a phrase called backing up and as you can see there are a few different options here and uh, we're going to let you come along with us as we explore this together I think we'll go to the uh, backing up contacts at uh, Gmail and scroll down and I see that there's a couple of interesting things but as you see in the upper related discussions, how do I back up my Gmail data and contacts to my hard drive? And what we'll do is we're going to go down and scroll to see what the forum says. And ah, here's somebody who uh, came up with a uh, top contributor in, uh, input. This about gmailbackup.com. Let's go uh, see what that one's all about. And my goodness, there's nothing on the screen. Hmm, wonder if they ran into a little problem using the word Gmail never really know. By the way, these little uh, red, uh, yellow, green, and blue marks in the corner are from the BSR uh, screen recorder technology we're using. And so let's see if there's anything else in this particular thread. I see there's one called eggonegg.com, but uh, let's go back up and see what we can find here. Ah, here's a couple here in the one called uh, uh, mailstore.com, and let's go find out more about that. Ah, email archiving and backup with mail store home and there's a nice little freeware version right here that looks like we might explore this and find out exactly what this will do for us so we'll go ahead and save that to our drive and while that's downloading we're going to take a look at its features and you can read this page yourself there's a URL in the upper left hand corner under my uh, yeah, input panel and uh, we're going to find out more about how well this product works. Okay, it looks like it's done, done with the download. Nice and small application. It's always nice to see. And let's follow along the path right here. Oh, yes, of course, English would be good. Okay, before you check and uh, hit that OK, I suggest you go ahead and do a quick browse through here to make sure that you're not uh, making your data available to some third party uh, applications development team. You know, try and keep it nice and clean. And this, of course, will find a place to put it on your drive. And we just go ahead and do the install. And we can see that, uh, you know, these nice small clients, you know, which is the way it used to be in the software world, they usually don't take very much time to install on your program. And so um, let's see what kind of progress this particular tool can make. Now, we're going to take you through the entire process of this so you can see what it's like during one of our uh, right by my side sessions and we'll probably um, do a little editing on this so that it doesn't take quite as long I can see that the full cycle is just over 14 minutes okay it says that the uh, successful installation was successful you can sign up for their e-newsletter if you choose to right there and let's find out where it is okay so let's go complete the installation pulls up another right screen again we strongly recommend that you review these to see if there's any glaring um, differences. Uh, this is how people sometimes sign up for distribution lists that they didn't think they uh, had intended. We think that's acceptable. We're going to go ahead and uh, let it do the default, put it where, we, where it wants to, and see how well this particular product works. Okay, ah, here we go. Nice simple application. We've got a couple of different options. We have archiving, searching. I might use that later. And exporting email, always helpful to have it. You can put it on a CD or DVD or put it on a hard drive or a USB stick. So let's see. Oh, yeah, kind of put your name in here so it can identify you. I use our computer helpers for good, uh, generic, which is our uh, campaign theme. And let's find out what the different uh, processes here. I think what we'll do is go down and uh, do a, um, let's see, no CD. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it to the hard drive. No, administrative tools first. Just checking to see if the settings are all correct. Doesn't look like anything extraordinary. So it's always good to check your admin tools to make sure that things are set before you get into a uh, fuller uh, conversation.
conversation. Oh, they even let you uh, uh, include attachments. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable with the attachments save. Those are where a lot of your problems with viruses arise from. Okay, let's do the backup. Okay, all right, so it's asking me to decide where to back it up to. Well, that's a nice uh, difference. I always like to create a new folder in my C drive. I could put it on my uh, backup drive, but uh, since the email is on there, I'm just going to call it uh, my uh, Gmail backup. And uh, we hit the OK button, and that says that we now have a folder where we can um, go ahead and do the storage. Now, let's see. Not really clear what we should do next. Do we do another backup? Hmm. No, nope, nothing there in the start function. Well, hmm. Let's see. Do we do it through here? Do we do it through the archive? This is where sometimes the right by my side training sessions can be very helpful. Okay, can we confirm we have the exact same location. There's no need to do that again. We know, okay, there it is. It looks like it's ready to do the uh, storing with the uh, mail store folder. So that's all configured properly. And let's hit the OK button and we'll, we can copy that to make sure it's good and then close that out. So I guess we're going to do the archive. All right, here's the main archiving screen and we're going to go choose our Gmail account. Type in our computer helpers for good, which is our primary Gmail account for this particular campaign. And uh, put the full address in there. And of course, oh, that's very nice. The uh, password does not show on the screen. That's very helpful for security. We'll go ahead and test it. And uh, well, that was interesting. Oh, here's a little disclaimer to check your settings. Well, this is a good uh, idea. So what we'll do is we'll go back and open up our Gmail account. Okay, and find our Gmail application and go to settings. And I didn't see it at first, but I can tell you it's right there at the top in the center. This is our profile page, which you should have uh, filled out on your own. And uh, let's go make sure we're looking for the right place. Okay, go back up here to the top, and it's right there in the middle at the top. It says forwarding, and uh, there. I go down and check at the very bottom, and you can see that in, it has already enabled IMAP. Okay. So that's good. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're not going to do any special configurations for our email readers. So let's try this again, just to make sure that maybe it needed uh, like a double test, double blind. So we'll run the test again, and voila, it says it's happy. So let's continue. And there's a couple different settings you can choose where you want to put it. Uh, whether you want to do certain date sequences, there's a timeout sequence in case you have a really long file. And then it says, let's go ahead and start the archive. So let's see how this goes. Click. There we go. And they're off. Now, this happens to be a very uh, significantly active email file because Computer Helpers for Good is one of our more significant projects. So we have quite a bit of uh, activity coming into this file from different places where uh, people, you know, basically send us questions or referrals. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite an active uh, account and you know you may not have the same kind of activity that we have but in uh, this particular case this um, um, particular stack I chose it you know for two reasons number one it's one of my more important files and secondly it's um, consistent with the theme of what we're doing with this video of being a computer helper for good and while this is chewing perhaps it would be a good time to uh, segue into what we do with computer helpers for good it's a program where we do a uh, special session called Right By My Side uh, Long Distance Service. And uh, what that means is that we have an enabling screen sharing technology from a company called Yugu, Y-U-U-G-U-U.com. And it allows us to uh, conduct uh, classes where you can come and visit my computer or I can do a service call and visit your computer. And uh, each one of the campaigns is unique in our view, and the for good comes in this way, is that we uh, contribute 28% of our service fees per hour to a charity of your choice. So if you decide to engage one of our team in a service hour, uh, we bill that out between 28 and 50 uh, US dollars per hour, depending on the complexity. And then 28% of that is set aside and contributed on your behalf or anonymously to a uh, charity of your choice. And uh, if you wanted to find out more about that, um, 
you'll see a little uh, uh, URL pop up on the screen here on the Yugu uh, on the YouTube uh, strategy at www.computerhelpersforgood.net and the four is a numeral four like one two three four and um, you'll see that uh, we're dedicating our business to uh, doing good and you're certainly welcome to look at that and maybe uh, also uh, look at the um, other links that we have we have a YouTube um, uh, account where we put some of these helpful videos which is where you're watching this and that's youtube.com slash computer helpers for good and we like to use the number four in all of our references and we do little self-help videos uh, we have everything from uh, how to uh, protect your important uh, photographs with uh, Picasso from Google uh, we have a technique for um, taking uh, tension out of your wrists and your hands called Swan Yoga and uh, a series of other little helpful do-it-myself um, video training guides and uh, we provide these as a public service so people can do it themselves and if they get into a little bit more complicated issue they might consider one of our computer helpers for good uh, service calls we like to call them long distance service because we can literally work with a computer anywhere in the world through the enabling technology of yougu.com and uh, keep your computer happy and do some good in the world at the same time well as you can see uh, I, like I mentioned this particular file is uh, particularly dense and it's uh, doing a thorough job of archiving it you know that screen is a little hard to see of course but that's okay because it's all, all just you know correspondence file and um, it'll be interesting at the end to uh, examine uh, which we'll be doing, you know, offline because I think the final results should be uh, probably private. So um, in our service calls, I would usually uh, ensure that the archiving is complete. And then instead of examining your personal contacts or your personal correspondence during our service call, I would ask you to discontinue the screen sharing. And then we would uh, ensure that your archiving had been completed. Um, it's interesting to note uh, I was uh, just checking to see the references up here, but I see Gmail is listed, Microsoft is listed with Outlook and Exchange. Uh, there are other types of email programs that are uh, involved, but I do not see Ymail on here or Yahoo Mail. And I think I'll take a look at that and uh, examine that with the uh, vendor a little bit more. This is the first time I've used the product, um, which is why the way we like to do our uh, uh, do it myself videos is with uh, authentic and realistic uh, references. You know, you notice that uh, we had to go looking around the screen to find out more about it. And of course, here is the uh, company again, uh, MailStore. It seems like a perfectly light client application. Here's the URL of record. And this is the actual Gmail account that we are backing up. You can see we have quite a few folders here with uh, more than average, uh, you know, activity and uh, it'll be important to know that we have this particular information uh, especially the correspondence because with the correspondence you get the email addresses and you can always rebuild your contact file accordingly and uh, we see this as a uh, an interesting opportunity for people to take a look at what their what their needs are most people take their online accounts for granted I know that we had an uh, almost identical experience with a Ymail account where someone hacked our account and uh, we've discovered it immediately because we had the tracking the tracking uh, you know application set and uh, they managed to uh, spam our list and uh, also uh, eliminate about two-thirds of our folders so a lot of important information was lost uh, Yahoo was unable to restore it because by the time their service people got around to it, their 72 hour window had expired. And uh, so we had to start rebuilding that very important, you know, Yahoo account uh, from scratch, which is, you know, not a bad thing, but it would have been nice to have some of those, uh, those archival communications available for future reference, uh, especially some of the more personal ones. But that is, as they say, c'est la vie. So you can see that the archiving is uh, moving well along its way. We're not going to sit and watch the uh, continuation of this, but we'll put a little panel at the end to tell you how you can get more involved with a right by my side session with Computer Helpers for Good. Thanks for watching.